Hi, I'm Crypto Lou and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through blockchain.info, which is a Bitcoin supporting wallet. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you do, then please give me a thumbs up as it really helps me to grow my channel and understand what kind of content that you enjoy. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, you will know that I've actually already created a blockchain tutorial in the past. However, this was one of my first videos. Sound quality wasn't perfect. And also they've actually added a few new features and I found a new way that you can actually save yourself on some transaction fees as well, which I'll take you through today. So blockchain is one of the most popular and well-trusted wallets that are out there. Um, they currently have 23 million different types of wallets. They deal with 160,000 daily transactions and they serve 140 different countries. Blockchain are an online wallet and the way that you go through and create yourself a new wallet, which is free, is you click onto the top right hand corner. So creating a wallet is pretty easy to do so. Initially, all you have to do is go through, enter in your email address, put in your password and confirm your password. And then you need to agree to the terms of service. Once you've done that, you then need to go through and verify your email. Now, at this point, your wallet ID has then been created. And that's this long string of numbers and letters that you can see here. Now, with regards to your wallet ID, this is almost like your username. It's something that you have to keep personal and keep protected to yourself. Now, because I'm using this for test purposes only, I'm not actually going to be storing any assets within this wallet. I can actually share this wallet ID with you. But when you have your own wallet ID, please ensure that you do keep that safe. Then once you have gone through and verified your email, you'll then be presented with the blockchain dashboard. And from here, if you did have assets already, you would be able to send, request, you can view your total balance, you can have a look at your balance in more depth here, and you can also have a look at different price charts. Now, one thing to be aware of is the fact that blockchain also have a mobile app, which is pretty handy that you can look at your balances on the go while you're out and about. But you can also use additional security like your fingerprint technology, just to give you that extra added level of security. So Bitcoin currently support Bitcoin, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. Now, one of the first things that you want to do when you have gone into your dashboard is go through the security center. And there's several different things that you can do from the security center. So first of all, like I said, you need to go through and verify your email. Next up, what you would want to do is back up a recovery phase. Now, the reason why you want to do this is that blockchain don't actually store your password. So if for any reason you do forget your password, you'll no longer have access to your assets. And the only way that you will then be able to get access back into your wallet will be using a backup recovery phase. So when you go through and back up your recovery phase, they give you a little security tip here. So that is not to store your recovery phase on your computer or online. It's really important to keep your recovery phase offline in a safe and private place. Anyone with access to your recovery phase has access to your funds. So what they then do is give you the option to print your recovery sheet. So what you would then want to do is take that offline, store it somewhere safe, put it in a safe or put it somewhere that no one else can then get access to it. So they will present you with 12 different words that you will then need to go through and make sure that you keep. Those words will then be used to actually back up your wallet. You then have the option to create a password hint. So you could put that in here. And other ways that you can go through and heighten your security is you can link your mobile number. So in here, you can put in your mobile phone and receive a one-time password after a login attempt. And you can also enable two-factor authentication. So what that does, again, it gives you an extra level of security. So you can use um, an app like Google Authenticator, which can be downloaded from the App Store. And then on your mobile phone, when you actually go through and log into your blockchain.info wallet, you'll then be presented with a six digit code on your phone and then you'll have to type in that six digit code. Now that code will only last for a short amount of time to ensure that you are with your mobile phone at the time that you are logging in. So I would really recommend in enabling that two step authentication with your blockchain wallet. And then if we just take a look at our settings, so this is where you will then see your wallet ID. So this is the ID that is created that we saw earlier on that is almost like your username that you need to keep personal to yourself. Now, one thing to mention, and they do point out here, is this is not an address for sending or receiving. This is purely your username to log into your blockchain account. 
From this screen as well, you can also pay your mobile phone and you can import your funds from My Ether Wallet. Now I have done a full tutorial and review of My Ether Wallet and what I'll do is I'll put it in the top right hand corner now so that if you'd like to take a look at that then please feel free to do so. Now to import your funds from My Ether Wallet, you will need to use your key store file which is created at the time of creating your My Ether Wallet. And then you would click on to import funds. You would select the wallet file and go through that process. Then under the preferences tab, you can then go through and you could change your email address. You can change the mobile number that is connected to blockchain. You can change your wallet language. So for example, you could change it from English to Dutch, for example. You could change your local currency. Now for me here, I'm based in the UK. So what I could do is select uh, GBP. It then gives you the option to be able to change your Bitcoin units. You can also get notifications so that when you receive Bitcoin, you can be notified by SMS or by email. And another really handy thing in here is the fact that it does provide you with an auto logout. So you can change this and customize how soon you want to automatically log your account out. Now, this is really good. For example, if you do forget to log out of your account manually, it will automatically log you out. So just ensuring that no one else has access to your wallet. And just another little customization thing in terms of the themes, you can go through and change different colors so you can invert the colors just to give it a different kind of look and feel. Then in relation to the addresses section, in here it allows you to manage addresses and be able to categorize things. So you could say that everything that comes from a certain address, you'd like to have it in a certain category. Then with regards to the imported Bitcoin addresses, what you can do is import a Bitcoin address. So for example, if you have an Exodus wallet, you could go through and show the available funds within your blockchain wallet. So you would go through, select import Bitcoin address, and then it will then state that your wallet automatically creates new Bitcoin addresses as it needs. You can optionally import an existing address and transfer the funds to your wallet if you have the corresponding private key. This is an advanced functionality and only suggested for advanced users. Now I have already created a tutorial of how to do this process and what I'll do is I'll put it in the top right hand corner now so if you would like to import your Exodus address into blockchain then please feel free to follow that process. So just taking us back to our dashboard what we're now going to do is we're going to take you through the buy and sell Bitcoin process. So for those of you that are going through and purchasing your very first Bitcoin blockchain is a really simple way to do so and what I'll do is I'll take you through that process now. So first up, ensure that you have your country selected and then click on to continue. And what it will then do is come up with the box that then allows you to type in the amount that you would like to purchase. Now, for example, you can say that you would like to purchase 100 pounds worth of Bitcoin. Now, what it also does is it shows you what the value of Bitcoin is at the moment. So you have that in this top right hand section here. But it also then does the conversion for you to show you how much Bitcoin you will actually get for your £100. Now, you don't necessarily have to have GBP at this point. You could say that you want to show US dollars, for example, and you could say I want to purchase 100 US dollars and it does that conversion for you. And again, it will show you what the conversion is from one Bitcoin to US dollars. And once you're then ready to go through and buy your Bitcoin, click onto the buy Bitcoin icon. So when you are going through and buying your Bitcoin, there are different ways that you can go through and do so. So that is either via bank transfer, which comes with a 0.25% payment fee, or via credit or debit card, which comes with a 3% fee. Now, when I purchased my very first Bitcoin, I actually did so using the bank transfer method. I wasn't aware, however, the fact that my bank would actually charge me an international bank charging fee for sending my funds across to, I believe it's to Denmark. So I thought I'd save myself a little bit on the payment fee by getting that 0.25% as opposed to the 3%, but I was actually charged that £25 fee. So since then, I've found a way that you can go through and do the bank transfer without having to pay that fee. I've actually created a tutorial of using something called the Revolut app along with Coinbase and GDAX to get your Bitcoin commission free. What I'll do is I'll put that in the top right hand corner now so that if you are using Coinbase, you can feel free to follow that process. However, what you can do is use part of that process in transferring your GBP into euros and then sending your euros across to the blockchain bank account. 
That way as well, you are getting the very best exchange rate and you're not being charged that fee. So what you would do is you would go through, sign up for the Revolut app. You would then need to create yourself a Euro wallet. You need to activate that wallet, convert your GBP into Euros, and then send those Euros across to the blockchain.info bank account. Although £25 may not seem that much, all the different types of fees do certainly add up. So it's worth going through and taking a look at that process. However, if you would prefer to use the credit or debit card, you do receive your Bitcoin instantly. There is that 3% convenience fee and you can use Visa or MasterCard. And it will give you a real time rate in this top right hand corner and it will also refresh after 15 minutes. If you then click on to continue, what it will then do is ask you to confirm your order. So it will give you information with regards to what the Bitcoin amount is, what the transaction fee is, how much Bitcoin you're actually going to receive, and then that conversion into your chosen currency. In my case, it's GBP. So we'll be paying £103 for this transaction. I then go through and click on to confirm. Then what it will do is ask you for your credit or debit card details. Now, obviously, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to be showing you all my credit or debit card details. So um, what you would do is then just follow through that process. Your Bitcoin will then appear in your wallet. Now, just taking you back to the dashboard, if you click onto Bitcoin on the left hand side, this is where you would then see all of your transactions. So any Bitcoin that you have will appear in the balance in the top right hand corner here. From this section as well, you have two different options. So you can send your Bitcoin. You then have the option of the currency that you would like to send. So you have an option of Bitcoin Ether or Bitcoin Cash. If I just keep on to Bitcoin for the moment, and I'll take you through the different types of options in a moment. So from here, what you can do is put in the recipient's address into the to section. So if, for example, you are sending this over to an exchange, for example, if you wanna go through and purchase other types of coins, you will need to send your Bitcoin to a certain exchange address. So what you would do is you would paste that into this address section here. So one little security check that you should do when you are putting in addresses into anything with regards to cryptocurrencies is just ensure that you are putting in the exact address at the time that you're entering these in. What I tend to do is check the last three digits, the first three digits, and the kind of center few digits as well, just ensuring that you are putting in the correct address. Once you do send things, most of the time they are not reversible. You would then put in the amount of Bitcoin that you're sending to that address and it'll give you that conversion. You can also put in a description. So if, for example, you're sending this over to an exchange, you could put in here Binance Exchange. You then have the transaction fees. So you have two different options. You can put it through as regular or priority. You will be paying more for putting your transaction through as a priority. And then you would click on to continue and confirm that through. Then if you want to receive Bitcoin into your account, what you would then need to do is click on to request. So for example, if you have some Bitcoin on an exchange and you want to move that across into your wallet. Now, best security practices, again, state that you shouldn't really keep your assets on an exchange. The reason for that is purely for the fact that an exchange is way more likely to get attacked as opposed to your personal wallet. So do ensure that you keep your assets within your personal wallet. And the way that you would then go through and send that across is here is your copy and share address. So what you would do is you would put this address into the exchange and then send your funds across into this address. Now you can copy this address from here and you can also view a QR code so you can use your mobile phone as opposed to copying and pasting these addresses. Or you can simply type in the amount in here, state what the transaction's for, and click on to next. And you can then send this link across to your friend or to your contact and request the Bitcoin directly going into your wallet. So blockchain also supports Ethereum as well. What you can do from here is if you click on to get started with Ether, and what it will then do is take you to the exchange section of the blockchain wallet and it will then allow you to go through and exchange your Bitcoin for Ethereum. So you would simply type in the amount of Bitcoin that you would like to exchange across to Ethereum. It will inform you of the amount and then you would then click on to next. You also have the ability to store Bitcoin Cash within your blockchain wallet as well. So again, you can click on to get started with Bitcoin Cash. And if you do already have Bitcoin Cash, what you can do is you can send that across again if it's in another wallet or if, for example, it's on an exchange, you can go through, copy the code or scan the QR code and then send across your Bitcoin to your blockchain wallet. If you then want to send your Bitcoin Cash, you have the ability to send. Again, what you would do is go through, put in the address of where you're sending it to, type in the amount and then click on to continue. It will also provide you with the, what the transaction fee will be for that transaction. 
So as you saw earlier, there is also an exchange held within the blockchain wallet. What it'll allow you to do is exchange from Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or My Ether, and then you can then convert them into Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Ether. It would then take you through the exchange process. Now, one thing to be aware of in terms of the exchange is that it can take between 20 minutes and two hours to complete. Blockchain also have a pretty good FAQ section. So if you aren't quite sure of anything, then please feel free to look at their FAQ and you can also go through their support center. So that was an overview and update of the blockchain wallet. And I hope that you found these useful today. And if you do, then please give me a like. If you have any questions at all, then please feel free to put them in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please hit subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you soon.